Thanks, Laura. I'm here right smack dab in the middle of a sunny day, out in the beautiful sunlight. It's incredible. Just think, billions and billions of cells are engaged in the first stage of photosynthesis right now. And those chloroplasts, specifically the thylakoid membrane system, the light-dependent reactions are proceeding. Johnny, before you go on, could you quickly review some principles of light that are important? Sure thing, Kevin. Pigments are molecules that absorb light. They trap packets of energy called photons from the sun. Each pigment absorbs a characteristic wavelength of light. Chlorophyll A is the main pigment found in photosynthesizing organisms. To us, chlorophyll A is green since it transmits green light. Carotenoids, other pigments, are red, orange, and yellow. These pigments are more visible in autumn when many plants stop producing chlorophyll. That is fascinating. Just by the color of the leaf, we can tell which pigments are predominant. In the summer and spring, it's chlorophyll. In the winter and fall, it's carotenoids. Carotenoids and other pigments, besides chlorophyll A, absorb energy and transfer it to chlorophyll A. Johnny, just how do these light-absorbing molecules lead to the production of food? Well, let's take a close look at those light-dependent reactions. Photosystems, which are clusters of pigments in the thylakoid membrane system, absorb sunlight energy and give up electrons. Electrons are transferred to an acceptor molecule, which donates them to a transport system in the membrane. ATP, the main energy carrier, is formed by one of two different pathways, depending on the plant. The first pathway is called the cyclic pathway. It's easy to describe. It's, well, you know, cyclic. In other words, electrons from photosystem one, thanks to chlorophyll, cycle through a transport system and back to photosystem one. Wait a minute, Johnny. These transport systems in plants, are they like tiny subways or something? No, Laura, not quite. I guess I better define an electron transport system. It's a sequence of enzymes and other proteins in the cell membrane. So the enzymes and the proteins pass the electron around like a hot potato. Right. And as fired up electrons travel through it, energy released by the electrons is used to change ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and an unbound phosphate ion to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So ADP is changed during this cyclic light-dependent reaction to ATP. Interesting. The second and dominant pathway is cleverly named the non-cyclic pathway. Electrons aren't cycled here. In this pathway, electrons leave the system attached to NADP, a coenzyme that carries two electrons and a hydrogen ion. Then electrons from water molecules replace them. Aha! I was wondering when we were going to get to the water part. I remember the reactants in the photosynthesis equation were carbon dioxide and water. Exactly, Laura. And here's what happens in a non-cyclic pathway. To begin, the sun's energy is trapped by photosystem 2, which in turn gives up an electron. This triggers photolysis, the cutting of water into oxygen, hydrogen ions, and electrons. The oxygen is given off. The hydrogen ions stay in the thylakoid membrane system. And the rather unexcited electrons replace the excited ones that took off to enter an electron transport system. Energy released in the electron transport system is used to form ATP from ADP and an unbound phosphate. After the electrons leave the first transport system, they end up at photosystem 1. Now remember these electrons are still hyped up and photosystem 1 is absorbing photons from the sun. So it looks like what we have there are some super duper excited electrons. Right Kevin. The electrons get so excited they move off to enter yet another transport system. In this system, the enzyme helper NADP picks up two electrons and a hydrogen ion. The new NADPH molecule whisks the hydrogen ion and the two electrons to the second stage of photosynthesis, the light independent reactions. Thanks, Johnny. The NADPH and ATP molecules Johnny was talking about are required for the next stage of photosynthesis. Coming up, light independent reactions. But first, let's review. Cyclic pathways only produce ATP. Non-cyclic pathways produce both ATP and NADPH, which are required for the next phase. Therefore, only plants which use non-cyclic pathways produce the necessary molecules to conduct the light independent reaction. I think we better summarize the cyclic and non-cyclic pathways in a little more detail. Okay, here's a comparison between the cyclic and non-cyclic pathways. 
In the cyclic pathway, sunlight causes electrons to go from photosystem 1 through an electron transport system and back to photosystem 1. Energy released in the electron transport system is used to form ATP. In the non-cyclic pathway, sunlight causes electrons from photosystem 2 to go through an electron transport system, enter photosystem 1, travel through a second transport system, then wind up in NADPH. Sunlight from photosystem 1 also splits water into oxygen, hydrogen ions, and electrons. ATP is formed from released energy in the first electron transport system. Wow, that's quite a process. And that's it for the light-dependent reactions. We'll be right back after this with more news, information, and more of today's top story, photosynthesis, right after this.